Class 1A's Adventures in Therapy by I Dream in Chapters Read by My Lost and Found Summary Let's go around the room and say one word that describes how we're feeling at the moment, all right? Something easy to kick off a conversation. The therapist motioned to Bakugo and asked, How about you help start us off, Bakugo? Bakugo narrowed his eyes. Bloodlust. Oh, the therapist said. That's not really what I was hungry, said Kaminari, unprompted. He wilted and leaned against Sero's side. God, I'm starving. Ooh, ooh, me next, Hagakure shouted, overlaying the therapist's gentle attempts at redirecting the conversation. Totally screwed for my math test. That's not one word, Bakugo snapped, because he had followed the rules. Thank you very much. Class 1A has government-mandated therapy. What could go wrong? Everything. The answer is everything. Some things in life were inevitable. Hunger, thirst, waving back at someone who wasn't waving at you in the first place. There were numerous experiences, emotions, and states of consciousness that were universal in the human experience. Government-mandated therapy, Class 1A reflected, was probably not one of them. Sorry, but this is out of my hands, Aizawa told the class, not looking very sorry at all. Does the Hero Commission really think that some shrink singing kumbaya spiel for hours is going to make us emotionally adjusted? Asked Shinso with a scowl. Aizawa shrugged, helpful as always. Just stay after class tomorrow, gremlins. Get ready for some bonding time. Todoroki's eyes twitched. His idea of bonding time was staring at a wall while his siblings and father screamed at each other. This, in hindsight, was probably a realistic set of expectations for what was about to go down. The shrink in question was a pleasant-looking woman with kind eyes, an empathetic outlook, and a cheery disposition. These would all be dismantled over the course of the afternoon. She greeted the class after the following bell the next day, laughing at Kirishima and Ida's aggressive replies, both of them nearly tripping out of their seats in effort to make her feel welcomed. I know some of you might be nervous, she opened with, her gaze open and understanding, but therapy can be a really healthy process. Hopefully, by the end of this, you feel closer to your peers and more secure in your sense of self. Kaminari, who had never had a single thought, ever, nodded like he was an expert in self-reflection. He liked to take BuzzFeed quizzes. He'd be fine. She had the class move their desks to the walls, and Ciro called out a lilted, I need some big, strong boys to help me move these. Like he was a choir teacher from hell. The class burst into laughter and shot their arms into the air. Sero assessed each ray's hand with extreme concentration before deciding that Uraraka was definitely the biggest, strongest boy for the job. Her quirk did make the task, like, ten times easier. Bakugo, petulant, pouted about this decision and refused to help move any more desks. Eventually, the therapist corralled the students into a misshapen circle in the cleared-out room, everyone sitting crisscross applesauce style. Let's go around the room and say one word that describes how we're feeling at the moment, all right? Something easy to kick off the conversation. The therapist motioned to Bakugo and asked, How about you help us start off, Bakugo? Bakugo narrowed his eyes. Bloodlust. Oh, said the therapist. That's not really what I was. Hungry, said Kaminari unprompted. He wilted and leaned against Sarah's side. God, I'm starving. Ooh, ooh, me next! Hagakure shouted, overlaying the therapist's gentle attempts at redirecting the conversation. Totally screwed for my math test! That's not one word! 
Bakugo snapped, because he had followed the rules. Thank you very much. Constipé, moaned Aoyama with a sniffle. Making a sound of sympathy, Uruaka began pulling out an assortment of tums and laxatives from her pockets, Ida staring on in mild worry. The honesty is great, the therapist broke in, only for Todoroki to send her reeling back with pregnant. While the therapist recuperated, Jiro began to scream. No impreg on my feed! Get back! Which was probably the most appropriate reaction to Todoroki being an inconsiderate shit. But the rest of the class chose to ignore whatever the hell he was trying to do with that choice. Focused, said Midoriya. Then his face crumpled under the weight of his sins, and the possible answers to the simple question. No! Energized! Inspired? Those are all just Sim's emotions, Midoriya! You cheater! Hey! he exclaimed, hurt. I did not cheat! Aw, look! Uraka cooed, like the sadist she was. He's turning as red as his shoes! The class, barring Bakugo, who was Bakugo, and Todoroki, who was Todoroki, turned to fuss over an extremely flushed Midoriya, poking at his chest and giggling. Embarrassed but secretly pleased, Midoriya covered his face with his hands to hide his grin. Why red, by the way? Shinso asked. Midoriya looked at him with a confused expression, so Shinso clarified. Why are your shoes red and not, like, orange? Oh, Midoriya murmured, looking sheepish. Well, I developed my... I've never had an orange, said Todoroki, and the class stared at him in ex exasperated awe. How are you real? asked Jiro. Bakugo snarled like the feral house pet he was and snapped. What? Are they too good for you, fucking silver spoon? I bet you had a private chef, Uraka chimed, a smile that reeked of malice and terror unfurling onto her mouth. My father would literally starve me as punishment, Todoroki replied, and Midoriya looked faint. I bet half and half's delicate stomach wouldn't be able to handle citrus, Bakugo continued, either taking what Todoroki said as a joke, or just not electing to acknowledge it. Only the best for Mr. One Percent! Uraka sing-songed, and her and Bakugo shared a look that solidified their alliance. Uraka with a deep-rooted hate of rich people, and Bakugo with a deep-rooted hate of Todoroki. Says the girl with a lactose intolerance. Do better, Todoroki said. Uraka pouted an unrepentant Todoroki, but pulled out lactic from inside her bra and smacked it onto the floor in front of her. I know no god! The therapist was beginning to realize that she may be a bit out of her depth. Getting the rest of the class to cough up an adjective provided to be challenging. Considering the fact that Tokuyami spiraled into a poem, whether it was improv or pre-written was unclear, but the damn thing took eight minutes for him to recite. About the properties of the human soul and something about 9-11, Gerard Way, and Fifty Shades of Grey, but eventually, the class went all the way back to Bakugo. Because the therapist was actually a very nice lady with an impressive list of degrees, the class did, despite their whack-ass execution, attempt to discuss every one of her topics. This, of course, meant that the people in the class 1A who wanted to speak could, and the rest of the class was forced to listen. Usually, the mutterings and ramblings of the more eccentric of their peers went ignored, but the therapist made sure to acknowledge and reflect on everything said by every student. Everything said by every student. And Bakugo wasn't even allowed to hit anyone. And that's why, said Oyama, who was in the middle of his eighth round of the Macarena, Momo showering him with Monopoly money. 
I think Tokoyami has the nicest arms out of the entire class. They're so firm. The therapist, lips pursed, didn't know what to say that wouldn't get her hit with a harassment charge. So she settled with, Thank you for your input, Aoyama. He's right, Hagakure agreed, voice suddenly dreamy. He has the arms of one of those male YouTubers that have cooking channels. You know, the ones that just show their hands and forearms while they cook. Yummy. Oyama tittered. The food or the arms? Tokoyami blinked at them, utterly baffled. Hagakure's sleeve suggested that she was fanning her face. Why not both? Bakugo has manly arms, Kirishima chimed in. Bakugo gave him an incredulous look, and Kirishima reached out to grab his bicep. Over Bakugo's ensuing scream, he added, They're always super sticky, though. Sticky? Ashido exclaimed, intrigued, and Kirishima nodded sagely. People started to reach out towards Bakugo curiously, but he rolled himself into a backward somersault and landed in a squat, ready to rumble. I'm not sticky, you're sticky! Bakugo, monsieur, Oyama purred. Your quirk necessitates hyperhidrosis. We've all seen your pit stains. He sniffed, tipped up his chin. The infam. Oh, said Shinso, just to be a dick. That's why your hero costume's top is black. What the world can't see can't hurt them. Uraka stared at Bakugo critically for a moment who had a vein throbbing dangerously on his temple. After another second of consideration, she turned to Midoriya and asked, You hung out in his room growing up, right? Was it musty? Bakugo yowled like a goddamn cat and said in a booming voice, My hygiene is fucking fantastic! Um, said Midoriya, wondering whether the dizziness and sudden urge to vomit meant that he had eaten something bad or if he was actually going into septic shock. Midoriya's probably pretty clean, Asui said, her, a finger pointing to her cheek. I mean, he's kept those sneakers in mint condition all year, Carol. Midoriya, choking on his tongue, managed a please. Why do I have to spend my time defending myself to you shits? Bakugo shouted, and the laugh he let out afterwards sent chills crawling across the room. Deku! That fucker and his rancid iPad! He used to sit there and watch hero videos and salivate! You don't think that screen was fucking cloudy? It was! His hands were always sticky! So fuck you! Deku was the type of fucker to keep damp Cheetos in his pocket! He reared his head back and roared, Vile! Ashido gagged. Yuck! Kachan! Midoriya yelped, indignant. I did not cry about it. Midoriya, weeping, replied, I already am! Oyama, still unconvinced, opened his mouth to say something equally as damning, but Bakugo interrupted him with a blunt, Keep your trap shut, Lumiere! But I can't stop twinkling! Aoyama exclaimed, shooting them a smile that gave the class very much sleep paralysis demon vibes. More like can't stop twinking, muttered Shinso, which, coming from him, was pot-meeting kettle. The therapist, who at this point had blocked out the majority of this shit show, tried to grasp at the smallest semblance of control. She noticed Tokoyami looking pensive, and resigned herself to another vague quote that probably belonged on a Pinterest post with a melancholy background, decided to derail the conversation while she still could. Tokoyami? the therapist asked, smiling pleasantly at the beaked boy. Do you have something to add? Tokoyami nodded, reached into his pocket, and pulled out a pitch pipe tuner. The class watched on, confused. The boy delicately placed his beak over the mouthpiece and blew a G note. The class sat in befuddled silence for a moment, 
before startling everyone, Jiro burst into tears. What did you do? Kaminari demanded, looking at Jiro sobbing into her hands in horror. Tokuyami tucked the pitch tuner back into his pocket and did not reply. Beside Jiro, Kirishima placed a comforting hand on her shoulder and tried not to grimace at how snotty her sobs were beginning to sound. He pavloved her! Momo accused, which caused a lot of murmured discourse to break out around Midoriya and a lot of awkward, confused silence to sound out around Bakugo. Bakugo, to his credit, hissed, You dumb fucks! In response to Kaminari, Kirishima, and Ashido's blank expressions, his army of himbos would never cease to exhaust him. Jiro, is there something you might want to talk about? asked the therapist, who wrongly assumed Jiro was distressed over some traumatic event the conversation had triggered, rather than the simple fact that Jiro would have experienced embarrassment about her middle school Tumblr page even when beyond the grave. Actually, the therapist said when Jiro just continued to cry, let's open the floor here. You all have been through events that most adults would not be able to recover from. On top of that, you're still expected to come to school every day and perform your best in preparation to be the moral compasses of today's society. It can be stressful, the therapist continued, scanning her eyes carefully over the group of fidgeting teenagers. To live up to the expectations of being a hero, you must feel like you have to be perfect and noble 24-7, right? Sometimes that can be stifling. Asui riveted and leaned forward on her wrists. So what? You think it would be easy for one of us to snap? Like Ida when he tried to murder the hero killer, Todoroki said, nodding like he expected everyone to have come to that conclusion. Ashido choked on her own spit, hacking into her hands. Todoroki's head tilted to the side. Bless you. He what? Kaminari burst out with looking at Ida with something like baffled revenance. You know, I thought Bakugo would be the one out for attempted murder. What the fuck are you talking about? Bakugo said calmly. I have class unlike four eyes and fucking bipartisan brain over here. Rocky, that's like kind of hypocritical. Hagakure pointed out and Todoroki looked down at his arms with wonder when an invisible hand patted his wrist. You did threaten to kill those villains back at the USJ, if they didn't give you information. Her arms waved furiously. They were begging for mercy and everything! Todoroki thought on this for a moment, and the class watched raptly, desperate to see some kind of epiphany. There wasn't one. Todoroki simply thought, decided this information was irrelevant, and said, If anyone here is a murderer, it's probably Koda. Koda went shock still and painfully pale. The class turned on Todoroki in an instant. Apologize! Ashido wailed. He's never done a single thing wrong, ever! Todoroki pointed at Koda, confused, and said, But he sacrifices animals all the time. Todoroki! No said Koda. The class's attention shifted onto his voice. He's right. Koda! Ashido gasped, shaking her head. Koda shifted in his seat and lifted up his hands, where a ladybug was trailing up his palm. During the final practical exam, I sent a horde of bugs onto present Mike. Some of them, some of them were killed on my command. The therapist was enthralled, leaning forward in her seat. And I keep thinking. Coda continued in a soft, lyrical voice, the rest of the class stunningly still. About how I would feel if my life ended like that. It was just trying to live, and I... I led it to its death. How would I feel? A cold hush fell over the room as Coda looked down at his lap. But, like... Kaminari began cocking his head to the side. You wouldn't feel anything, though, because you'd be dead, so... There was another moment of strange silence. Jesus Christ, Kami! Really? 
Hey, I'm just saying. No, this is good, the therapist said, grinning. Here we go, getting into some heavier topics. The line between right and wrong, the ethical uses of quirks. We're delving deeper into our psyches, she went on. I also wanted to briefly touch on the disappearance of one of your classmates, Mineta Minoru. The class went suspiciously tight-lipped. The therapist made a sympathetic noise. Convinced the class was probably just shaken up at the loss. I understand that it must be hard dealing with the loss of a classmate, especially since there aren't any new leads. Bakugo leaned back on his hips, stretched, yawned, and cracked his neck. More silence. Kirishima looked at Bakugo, blanched, and resolved to say nothing on the matter. Do any of you want to share any fond memories you have, Mineta? Sometimes, the therapist murmured. Her tone was one that would be appropriate if the class was quiet because they were uncomfortable, and not because they literally did not give a shit that Mineta was gone. Especially with the disappearances, it can be hard to find a sense of closure. There's always those what-ifs, but we can still remember the good times. No one, not even Oyama, who had taken his time to answer every previous question with too much enthusiasm, spoke up. Todoroki, in the wake of the silence, let out a half-assed scream. It fell flat and was more of a brief exclamation of the word, ah, than anything. But it caught everyone's attention. The class's eyes traveled to the floor, where water was dripping onto the carpet. Todoroki wiped his damp right hand on his pants and snuffed out the flames that was in his left with a fist. My water broke he said, and the class broke into pandemonium. Jiro immediately began shouting again, pointing her finger at him with a betrayed expression, and Asui held her back. The therapist opened her mouth, paused, and then shut it again. By that point, Todoroki had been lowered to the floor by Kaminari and Saro, both more than eager to play along. Each boy gripped one of his hands. Breathe, Todoroki! Kaminari shrieked, and Aoyama pulled out a fan from who knows where to start fanning at Todoroki's clearly not perspirating forehead. We need a doctor! yelled Ashido, her eyes zeroing in on Bakugo, whose face went pinched and sullen at the attention. Her smile grew. Bakugo, you're good at everything, right? Baku, bro, we need you! Kirishima pleaded, nudging Bakugo forward. The blonde stomped his feet. Immediate no! His friends all grabbed onto his clothes and winded him up. Todoroki offered a meager, Ow, my contractions. Ow. Make the shrink do it! Bakugo countered, but when they looked to the commission assigned psychologist, she was still stuck, speechless, and temporarily immobile. Bakugo scoffed, eyes going a bit defeated. Please, 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 please! Ashido begged, dropping to her knees and tugging at his ankles. Reaching his limit, Bakugo caved with a Fuck, fine, move, assholes! Todoroki, in birthing position, watched Bakugo sit down in front of his knees and nodded at him solemnly. Bakugo, who had one too many experiences in spotting sit-ups during public school P.E., repressed the urge to put his hand over Todoroki's feet, and preferably picking him up by said feet and swinging him into the nearest wall. They sat in silence for a moment before Todoroki lifted his feet off the floor and asked, Am I dilated? Bakugo slammed his face against Todoroki's knee. This, of course, triggered Todoroki's reflexes, sending his foot straight into Bakugo's windpipe. Wheezing and teary-eyed, Bakugo began to plot the disappearance of a second classmate. It was then that Todoroki looked up, almost pleadingly at Midoriya, eyes going wide and round. "'Call my father. He'll want to see this,' he said. Kaminari choked down a laugh, disguising it as an elated sob. 
the pro-hero endeavor answered the phone, like all middle-aged people do. The phone held close, almost tucked under his chin, and the angle zoomed uncomfortably close. The man squinted at the camera and shouted, Shoto, what is the meaning of this? I'm in labor, Todoroki said with a straight face, completely relaxed as Bakugo screamed, Why aren't you pushing? Endeavor squinted even more. What? I'm in labor. Huh? I'm in. Shoto? Shoto, can you hear me? I, I can't see myself in the corner anymore. You have to press the camera button on the bottom. You've turned off your camera. Endeavor tapped at the screen with a furled, furrowed brow, his massive thumbs covering the majority of the screen while he struggled with the mechanics. One, two, three! Bakugo yelled, and Todoroki screwed up his face. PUSH! To the side, Uraraka and Shinso were in a literal fist fight over godfather privileges, both of them collectively deciding that Midoriya would be the godmother. Uraraka flipped Shinso over her shoulder, pinned his arm behind his back, and bonked his head. The battle was won. In the meantime, Endeavor had figured out FaceTime, but was still helplessly confused about what was going on. Shoto, is this a play? You're going to be a grandpa, Todoroki informed him, leaning to the side so his father could see his face. He held his hand out expectedly to Momo, who primely dropped a baby doll into his palm. Todoroki then proceeded to shove it down his shirt until the head barely crested outside the fabric. Kaminari cried out in delight. We can see the head! Endeavor, who never claimed to be with the kids, hoped this was a new... What was it again? Ah, yes. Trend. He decided he did not like trends. Midoriya, who was going blue with how little he was breathing while holding the camera, tried to screen record the momentous occasion so he could show All Might later. Instead, he accidentally clicked the button that turned the camera back to being front-facing. Midoriya Izuku, his eyes lit up with a crazed glint of fear, and the number one hero, his eyes the only discernible feature on the phone screen with how close he was to the lens, stared at each other for a solid 30 seconds. And then Endeavor said, Boy from the sports festival. Endeavor, returned Midoriya, trying to disguise how he was frantically clicking at the button that would re reverse the camera. I hope you're not distracting my son with nonsense. Todoroki announced. The baby has been born. The camera reversed. Todoroki sat, Aoyama fanning his face with the plastic doll in his arms. Endeavor fell silent. Aren't you happy? asked Todoroki. It's one more child for you to ruin. The therapist, who had been watching the display with a detached sense of fear, brought a trembling hand up to her face. We, said Endeavor, interrupting himself with a cough, we will discuss this at dinner next weekend. Todoroki rocked the doll in his arms and said nothing. Literally, what the fuck? said Jiro, and the FaceTime call disconnected. And with that, the group therapy session came to a close. In the aftermath, the class all moved the desks back to their previous locations, Todoroki plopping his newborn onto his desk unceremoniously. There are a few of you, the therapist said as the class stretched their aching limbs, that I'd like to speak with a bit more one-on-one -on -one setting. After talking to your principal, teacher, and all of you, I've compiled a short list. The class collectively deflated. If you hear your name, hang back for a few minutes, the therapist continued. She cleared her throat and immediately said, Todoroki, which was fair. Bakugo's delighted snickering was given a swift death with the following up of Bakugo, Midoriya, Shinso, and Ida. You know, said Kaminari, peering into Bakugo's face, 
That scowl is kind of impressive. Bakugo scowled harder. Shinzo wanted to ascend into space and suffocate. It was a fucking Roycher test. The therapist had a stack of ink splotches on sheets of paper, to which she had cheerfully held up to the sullen student. When Shinzo saw the splotches of color, he realized that the only way he was going to get out of this quickly was to play by the therapy rules. Thus, he said the literal blob of paint looked like a boy with fog over his mouth. Gleefully, the therapist probed him more on his choice, and Shinzo made sure his responses were all traumatic and profound. He was a goddamn therapy MVP. And what led you to come to the conclusion your quirk was evil? She asked, jotting down notes on her pad of paper. Shinzo scoffed and tilted his head up to the ceiling. I mean, the muzzle sent a pretty clear message. I'm sorry that happened to you. It's never acceptable to treat anyone like that, much less a child. The therapist consoled him, though Shinzo's answering nod was distracted. Tell me what your thought process is right now, Shinzo. With eye bags that could weigh down a balloon, Shinzo smacked his lips together. Woof. The therapist blinked. It looks like vomit said Todoroki, sending a cautious look at the therapist. When she nodded encouragingly, he seemed to gather a bit more courage. I used to vomit a lot as a kid. The therapist made a considering hum. Tell me a bit more about that. Todoroki looked her dead in the eyes and said, It usually happened after my dad would sock me in the stomach. And then he made a duck face, fingers raising in a peace sign. It's a vagina. There was a moment of silence. A large object toppled to the floor. The therapist raised a brow, expression pensive. A uh, vagina? A low choking sound came from the lump on the floor. The object in question was in fact Ida Tenya, who seemed to be slipping into an almost comatose-like state. Eyes glazed over and staring at nothing. Is something about vaginas distressing to you, Ida? Ida screamed. From the hall where they were waiting for Bakugo, Kaminari and Siro glanced at each other with wide eyes, muffled, gutted screams emanating through the walls, intersperked with racking sobs. What is she doing in there? Shoji, his expression indecipherable under his mask, patted a disastrously giggling Jiro on the back. Some things were best left unsaid. The therapist held up a vague, blob-like figure and allowed Bakugo a moment to examine it. Now, what do you see in this image? Bakugo grinned, sharp and spastic. Those are Deku's intestines. Oh, the therapist said idly looking at him with interest. Why, Deku's. Because that's what they look like when I imagine tearing them out of his stupid goddamn gut. Ah, see. She replied after a moment, a bright gleam to her eyes beginning to fade. Is Deku a villain? What? Bakugo snapped, before comprehension flooded his face. Fuck no! He's a slimy little shit in the hero course. His lips turned down into a more fierce scowl than usual. He muttered, Shitty Deku couldn't even be a villain if he tried. And why's that? Bakugo gawked at her. Because he's dumb and useless and a quirkless freak. Quirkless? The therapist broke in, her Freudian muscles beginning to stretch. Taken aback by the interruption, Bakugo paused in his tirade and slumped in his seat. Well, not anymore, but I hate him! As he burst into a garbled cry of rage, the therapist nodded to herself, jotting down, projection, quirkless status a representation of his own perceived impotence, erectile dysfunction? Yes, she thought to herself. 
The picture was slowly starting to become clear. It's All Might, Midoriya said. The therapist, despite herself, was taken aback. Really? Midoriya then proceeded to go into a seven-minute rant about color theory and All Might's costumes over the years. He gushed over All Might's dependency, kindness, and bravery, only taking breaths when absolutely necessary. Midoriya, the therapist said after a moment of thought, is your father present in your life? Midoriya squeaked. Got him. How about we talk about what happened to your brother, Ingenium? That must have been a difficult time for you, the therapist suggested. Sniffles broke the ensuing silence, and the therapist peered down at the mound of Ida. I can't believe I said that, he mumbled, his glasses discarded by the side. How disrespectful! Ida? He began to whisper furiously to himself, swiping his arms with such momentum that he spun around the floor like a tipped-over wind-up toy. Ida, your brother! But Ida did not answer. He just kept on gyrating. For a TAT, she showed Midoriya a picture of a boy sitting at a table by himself, hanging his head low. Tell me about this boy, Midoriya. What is he doing? How is he feeling? Hmm, Midoriya hummed, thoughtful. M maybe he's at lunch, at school. Why is he alone? The boy lit up with excitement, thrilled that he knew the answer. Because he's a quirkless loser that everyone hates. He's sitting alone because if he tried to sit with someone else, they'd laugh at him or trip over his lunch and spill it on him. It's easier for him to sit alone. When you're alone, the only person that can hurt you is yourself. He tilted his chin and closed his eyes and flashed her a sunshine grin. Did I do it right? That one looked like steam. And how does that make you feel? Todoroki rubbed at the edge of his scar. Brow creased. Itchy. Hot. Unloved. Who hurt you? Asked the therapist, steadily growing more unkempt. She ran a hand through her hair, pieces splitting from her formerly neat bun. Todoroki let out a considering hum. Do you want that in MLA or APA? Midoriya, you seem to have some strong opinions on the quirkless. The therapist no noted, face carefully neutral. Why do you think that is? Because, Midoriya began, sending her a weird look. They're useless. Doesn't everyone think that? The therapist paused for a moment and licked her lips. But why do you think they're useless? Midoriya looked at her like she was a small child, worthy of pitying, and told her, I mean, I think I know. I'm corkless. The therapist blinked at Midoriya. Midoriya blinked at the therapist. What? She asked, genuinely confused. Is that a metaphor? Midoriya's jaw dropped. Oh, oh, I, I forgot. A couple of things were going on in the therapist's brain, but the thing she ended up asking was, What's your hero name? Deku! Why, did Kachan mention me? Oh, said the therapist. Oh, Jesus. Midoriya thought that was a pretty adept description of his life thus far. So I hear you have some trouble interacting with fire. Todoroki shrugged. Okay, okay, the therapist said with a tight smile. We're going to try this little thing called systematic desensitization. What that means is we're going to make a list of things starting from the least scary to the most scary that have to do with fire. Then I'll have you go into a meditative state and we'll run through some hypnotherapies. Nodding, Todoroki reached for the paper she held out for him and awkwardly held it in front of him. So, for something that's not so scary, you can use fire to cook food, right? Do you like s'mores? Yes, Todoroki replied, lips pursed in thought. 
The therapist nodded excitedly and jotted it down. That's great! Campfires are super fun. You can hang out with your friends, tell scary stories. What do you think about that? Todoroki, twiddling his thumbs against the paper. Um, I like toasting marshmallows. The therapist nodded, and he continued. My friends like the smell. What about you? Not really, he replied evasively, shaking his head. The therapist made a questioning hum, so be clarified. It reminds me of how my brother smelled. The therapist, still holding out hope that this wasn't going to spiral into something that would make her want to cry, asked, Does he smell like firewood? No, said Todoroki. I just mean that's what he smelled like when he burnt to death in the house. The therapist squeezed her eyes shut. Mm-hmm, right! Todoroki's eyes went shifty. Um, are you okay? With a small whine, the therapist dropped her head into her hands. When Aizawa returned to the classroom to speak to the therapist, he knew just by looking at her that his hell class had been, well, hellish. Aizawa blinked. Yeah. These kids, said the therapist, lip wobbling. They're all unstable. Aizawa blinked. Yeah. No, no, I mean, they're... The therapist broke off into a broken, strangled sound, and Aizawa nodded in understanding. Yeah. And you teach them every day, she asked, expression concerned. Shrugging, he said, For now, I contemplate retirement in every waking moment. He patted her on the shoulder as he passed only to stumble over something on the ground. Bending down, he picked up Todoroki's baby doll by the ankle and held it out in front of him like it was a dirty piece of laundry. The therapist took one look at the doll and began to cry. Aizawa idly nodded to himself. Sounded about right. Someone went into fake labor. The therapist sniffled. Mm -hmm. Was it Todoroki? Mm -hmm. Figures. There was a slight shuffling sound, and Aizawa produced a bottle of ibuprofen from somewhere within the folds of his capture weapon. Have a headache. Rubbing at her nose, the therapist took a couple of tablets, downed them, and left the room. Bonding time. Aizawa snorted. It was so hard to be this fucking funny. Show? Hazashi called from the doorway. You ready to head home? Azawa took one last look at the room before shutting off the lights. When he looked at Hazashi, the other teacher grinned at him, the two falling into step beside each other. So, he asked, grin stretching wide across his face. How was it? Exhausted, Aizawa hummed. Fine, I think. They kept walking down the hall. Todoroki gave birth. Hazashi nodded only having processed the first sentence of Aizawa's response before chirping. That's good! Wait. Hazashi stopped in the middle of the hall, brows shooting up. What? Aizawa kept walking. Wait, so hold on a minute. Stop walking so fast! Hazashi's quick footfalls and shouts echoed about the halls. Against his volition, a small smile began to creep up the corners of Aizawa's mouth. Those damn kids. Maybe retirement could wait. Okay, so, I absolutely love this fic, but this took so long to record. Like, okay, right now, before I've edited, my recording is 56 minutes long, and I don't- so much of that is- I'm just gonna have to cut out because it's me just laughing and cackling. This was so hard to record because I just kept laughing. I- I love this so much, you don't understand. It's amazing. I hope you all enjoy it. Have a good day. Yeah, I, this- this might be the only video I post this week if this does end up being nearly an hour long. Maybe I'll post on Monday. Probably not Friday, though. Okay, have a good week. Farewell. I wanted to add some quick bloopers here at the end, just 
because while I was editing this, which is right now, there's just some lovely moments where I completely cracked. So enjoy this last little bit. Sending his foot straight into Bakugo's windpipe. Fuck, this is hard not to laugh. Todoroki then... <laughs> this. 